mountain bikers need endurance and bursts of power. And studies show that mountain bikers have a slightly lower VO2 max than road cyclists, which makes sense. You build VO2 max with endurance, not sprints. Perfect segue into how to increase it. And step one is having an accurate VO2 max. I'm sure somebody has already hit pause to let me know that the only way to really know your VO2 max is with a lab test. And I did a lab test years ago, but having a Garmin watch totally changed the way I train because I can see it all the time. And according to the uber credentialed sports science writer, Alex Hutchinson in this article and studies like this one, Garmin devices are accurate to within three to 5% of a lab test. And many athletes say it's bang on with their lab tests. So I think what's more important than it being like absolutely perfect is knowing how you're trending over time. Here's the thing, I'm not sure how many people my age are gonna go and do a lab test. What I think we should do is focus on ensuring that this data is as accurate as possible, right? So first things first, you're gonna need a good power meter. Your cycling VO2 max is a combination of heart rate and power measured in watts. And sidebar, whatever power meter you're using, make sure it's properly calibrated. I learned this one the hard way. Improperly calibrated power, wrong VO2 max. And that's partly why my VO2 max has changed. You'll also get more reliable data if you get a chest strap for heart rate. It's more accurate than the optical sensor here at your watch. All right, so now your VO2 max is dialed in. Step two is to know where you stand compared to people of your age and gender. Thanks for watching this clip from the Century Ride Show. To see the full episode, the link is in the description. Thanks everyone.